And I'm so like, what's the timeline on the um, declaration again, too? That was going to be. Well, I think we wanted council to take it up their first meeting after the election. Right. So we still have a couple of weeks. Yeah. Least. I think if we can get and, it. And if I might, um, sorry. So so just sort of logistically, um, some of the things that we've been developing within the city manager's office is that the first meeting after um, the election, so that would be the 8th, will be really a sort of um, housekeeping kind of meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so really the, the, the first meeting that would be available would be the 22nd um, and maybe even perhaps the first meeting in April, just because they'll be getting up to speed and making sure that they have everything that they need to make um, decisions and things like that. And so there are things that are starting to line up in the queue. And I know this is an item for sure that's been kind of on the radar, um, but I just wanted to kind of update the group on, you know, what that might look like. Mm -hmm. If we're not going to make any decisions on this call, maybe Pellin and maybe Michael will be joining, but so maybe we'll be able to get a quorum, but it can, can we just get those, that quick update? Does that make sense? Or, or should we wait till that's a, like in a, in a meeting, meeting space? Does that make sense? What, what update, Shana? Of the, um, what the, the, the city manager's office has been working on. Uh, so I, so that's pretty much it. Um, oh, okay. That's it. Sorry. I thought you were I, I'm happy to, uh, help, uh, sort of coordinate, uh, to the extent that, you know, sort of, we've got everything kind of locked in, but, um, just sort of as things are taking shape, um, and, you know, we're kind of looking ahead and looking uh, towards a, a new group of counselors and, you know, uh, quite a few members at that. <laughs> we want to mm -hmm. make sure that, you know, this first um, meeting that they do have on the 8th is probably really, it's really shaping up to be more of a kind of like, this is city government. This is mm -hmm. more of an onboarding orientation uh, type of meeting. And then um, the 22nd, there are a few items that they'll probably take up that um, have been sort of queued up strategically. So people are definitely getting in line um, to get in front of them. And so logistically, we just need to be aware of that. I know that this is important. It needs to, you know, go to them. Um, but probably the first meeting that they really could take it up would be the 22nd of March or the first meeting in April. 22nd of March, first meeting in April. Okay. Wasn't there, I mean, it was the um, the folks that joined us to talk about the, the organization that, that started the whole project to get all the towns in Vermont to sign on. Um, didn't they have a, they have a deadline, don't they? Their own deadline of like May or something. May 11th, to, yeah. yeah. Right. So there's still a little bit of time to get it on mm -hmm. the city agenda, but not that we want to keep pushing it forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I recall, they were thinking like May, right? Um, so that makes sense. I mean, you know, to, if they see it and they request changes to it, then, you know, there needs to be a little bit of turnaround time. Yeah. Hello, Michael. Hello, Pellin. Hey, I'm so sorry. I, I forgot that there was a meeting today, which is why I never sent out a reminder or anything else. So I apologize. Um, but we we're just talking about for the Declaration of Inclusion, um, if we want to finalize that and get that on the agenda, that they could review it March 22nd, first meeting of April, and that would still give them enough time to be putting it in on in May. But just if you had any update from talking with folks in Highgate. Um, has, anyone, has anyone, I tried to reach them four times oh, okay. and nobody, nobody would respond. Um, I was... So, the the article that Jeremy sent was help, helpful, but yeah, I'm still not sure what was going on. The 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 spokesman who said you know read all the way down to the bottom yeah. as if there was some coded message in there, and I read all the way down to the bottom, and I still couldn't figure out what the objection was. Yeah, yeah, I didn't I didn't either. I my sense from it was just that somebody feels like they would be tied into like taking some action if they sign on to this. Heaven forbid. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so 
so i get like i think we're we have the finalized language i feel good about that right like is that does, does anyone have any other concerns with raising a word can we kind of like check this off the list for for moving it to, to city council i don't i'm i think it's i think we did a, took a fine tooth comb to the yeah. language last week i think it's ready for council to weigh in on Cool. Um, and so do we do we want to spend some time today looking at the strategic plan then too? Well, wait a minute, don't we need to, do we need a motion to do that? Um, a motion no. to bring it to the city council? Good question. Yes. Let's just do it just to be safe. <laughs> okay. I make a motion to bring it to the city council. Jeremy, do you second? I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. Any opposed? Thanks, Michael. Just check in. I, I appreciate your, your. Is the, is the word. <laughs> Good process. A due process. Good that's process. the words. <laughs> While we're um, approving things, we also want to approve, uh, review and approve the meeting minutes from the last meeting that Michael sent. Um, I'm going to pull them back up here too. Um, yep. um this is why I pull everything together the night before. So sorry. <laughs> yep. Right. And you sent it on the eighteenth. Yeah. I move that we approve the minutes from January 18th. Helen, do you second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. Um, now I gotta find that again. And so, um, ooh, can I do this here? We can put the link in the chat. Strategic yes. plan. Great, the strategic plan. Thank you, Jeremy. Pulling it up from the agenda pulls it into a document that like doesn't have any header bar for me and stuff. And I'm always like, why is this silly looking? Um, and so I think, yeah, we've had a chance to look things over, but this is like prim prioritizing meeting with city council members post-election, presenting to the new city council early on, um, you know, focusing on meeting with all the city councilors is part of the public engagement, is working on growing committee membership, advertising the city application, um, doing an outreach session more in the late summer, early fall. Uh, or I think it's actually doing it in the fall in partnership with the Community Justice Center. <laughs> and then um, on as part of the ongoing um, education, Helen started that like list of like DEI trainers for people that keep asking us for them and things like that, um, rolling out these different opportunities for other committees and, and staff. And, uh, yeah, I thought I can participation again plan for next year. But um, I, because I forgot that we were having this, I've not thought about how we're how to facilitate this session. But maybe just like open it up to like reactions, reflections that people had. And then take it from there. Uh, so Shana, uh, when I look at the like uh, each um, month or couple months um, goals, uh, which are 
the city's responsibilities, which are ours, should we put something like that or we don't need anything like that on the document? Um, like, I guess, is there an example that you're thinking of, Pellet? I'm not fully... Advertising stipend, right? It's the city's responsibility. Let me go back to, sorry. Uh, well, I think this is more of like meeting with other committees and continuing to do that outreach. Committee members meet with other identity-based and issue-based organizations and leaderships oh, and, you see, know, we're looking at the tactics. So I do think that's on us. Okay, it's like, like what we're working yeah. on. That's why, yeah, that's why I was suggesting should we put anything like that or this document will be internal anyway so we don't have to mention it just checking choose the council i'm not sure yeah if anyone has thoughts I just want to ask a question about uh, item number four and the tactics of the first um, of the first where we commit ourselves at least one member of this committee is going to attend one meeting extra meeting a month. Is that really going to work? <laughs> I mean, you know, all of us, I think, are pretty well booked up. I know. It's like, Michael, now that you're not on every committee anymore. You, you, you thought I would waiting. do that, right? <laughs> what? You thought I'd do that? No, no, no. I was <laughs> saying you used to just be on all the committees so you could just report back and now we've got to actively seek them out. Yeah, I mean, right. I think I was really just thinking about these two, but if other things come up, right, is one meeting. Yeah, that's pretty arbitrary. It's like as needed, right? I know like the Elks Lodge just did another round of things and I wasn't able to go to any of them, but like if there are other opportunities, we want to yeah, be intentional about that, right? Like has anyone been going to the Elks Lodge? Um, I, I went to the one on Saturday. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't plan to go to the, the others okay. that are going, are going to be just some compliments to that so i won't go again um, yeah i attended the meeting they did on zoom yeah yes so done check we've done that for q1 <laughs> okay can you can Pellin and michael can you offer a little bit of commentary on what those meetings were like as far as i don't know right now engagement and things like that you, you want to do that now or you want to do it after we um, this Whenever. Okay. Well, I'm curious. I would say we let's finish this 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 work with the this, the plan, and then I'll tell you okay. what I saw. Thanks. And heard. Um. So I guess, yeah, and the other like comments are, I think this is, this is our like, this, we're not, what am I trying to say? This is a plan, right? So like, this is where we can like set our agendas for the meetings and help us provide some direction for our work. And, um, cause I think that's what we've been feeling a little bit directionless. 
Um, and so is this accomplishing that goal? Do we want to approve it? Um, and kind of work on building our monthly agendas off of this plan. Um, if there's anything else to say around that. Mm -hmm. It sounds good. Yeah, I feel there's more detail to get into, of course. I'm again, I'm I'm feeling like what is the relationship with city council? What is their level of awareness and how do they want what are they going to prioritize? Um so we're kind of in a holding pattern until the new council and the new mayor come in. Um, and we're going to need to, there's going to have to be some kind of orientation for them about what CDEC is, as well as individual meetings that we'd like to do with council members. Um, so that feels like there's a few steps there around, I guess, education and just relationship building. Um, that seems important. Um, Lauren um, does very, you know, she does great job in the city council meetings and she always um, show how SAJAC is important, the decisions um, city council makes. So um, mm -hmm. I think we can put more on the agenda or there's a city council report at the end of the meeting, maybe, um, Lauren and I can mention whatever you want us to mention to the city council. I think we can do that. But Lauren really mentions every single time if something is related to, say, Jack's um, agenda or activities. Yeah, or I wonder too if just like after the presentation to the new city council, like if we just want to circle back, like at the end of Q2, just to reevaluate this plan and like, have a come like see where the direction of the city council is going to be and if we wanted to like re re up it you know mm -hmm. we can just build that in if that makes sense oops i'll just put that in the top one here um what am i saying Just like updating the strategic plan with updated priorities from city council at like end of June, early July. And uh, since now uh, non-citizens but Montpelier residents can vote in local elections, do you want to you know, have any goal about reaching out to them or I think it's a inclusion too. So I don't know how many people will come and vote, but now they have rights to do that. Um, yeah, and that's been something that's like, was on our last strategic plan that we haven't been able to really incorporate as of bringing it, like I'm more thinking about like, um, English as a second language um, learners and, and working on how can we continue to do that outreach. This is like a kind of a specific project. Um, I I don't really know what that looks like if you have a thought on that, Pellen, um, for the, doing that outreach, but I'm intrigued. Michael, were you raising your hand? Hard well, I think that, that that really is the responsibility of the city clerk mm. to, to, you know, to get people and he, Ask him to, if someone I think should ask him to uh, put a letter into the newspapers, into the bridge, into the Times Argus, uh, reminding folks that they are eligible to vote. Um, I don't think 
I mean, well, we we could do it, but I think it's really his job. But that you know, he he claims responsibility for taking care of the elections. So I think we should ask him, you know, formally ask him to do it if we want to do make it as a motion or something like that. But informal is okay. How does that sound, Colin? I mean, it wouldn't hurt yeah. to have somebody from CJAC write letters to the editor or put it on front porch forum, for but I think the burden is really on the city clerk. Right, we can be a helper, but we're not like owning that project right. that's right. on the city. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to double check, right, if we need to do anything about it or it's just like not our um, job. So, okay. Yeah. And Kelly, like, I don't know if you can, or if I should reach out, I'm just trying to like hear about what the plan is for doing that um, in the city, the city clerk's office. Um, so is this specifically about the language um, conversion? No, um, of uh, reminding um, uh, like aspiring citizens that they can vote in Montpelier um, in this next election. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I we could certainly reach out to the clerk. Um, yeah. And I mean, if if that's something that you you'd like me to help with, I can. I I can get. I got it on my to do list. That's that okay. Good. I got it. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Because I saw that already. I think one uh, citizen. Uh, she posts this news on Front Porch Forum. Uh, but she was doing it because she was very happy about it, right? She's an American citizen, but she just want to share this good news with the rest of us. But I haven't seen or heard anything coming like a more formal way. That's why I just want to check with you. Well, I think it's a good idea to to have the, the you know somebody make make it very clear in the newspapers, which is you know still one way of get, communicating to people, you know that this is actually past all the barriers that were thrown up against it. So, just so long as it gets done. <laughs> Muted. Anything else we should add or adapt on this strategic plan? And I think, yeah, we can continue. It's going to be a living document, but we want to lock it in between um, between calls at the minimum. Should we take a closer look at the, the Q1 items um, and see what we want to do within each of those? Yeah. That'd be great. So, I mean, I, the first thing I see here is around participate and support <laughs> outreach for Elk Slug Project. Um, does anyone have ideas about what that means? I mean, some of us are able to attend the engagement sessions. Are there other things that we want to do around that? I mean, I think we had, at one point we had tried to, or maybe I missed it. We had a meeting with the person who's managing that outreach. Is that true? With Josh did we, and with did the we meet with him? Yeah. Did the committee meet with him? I've met with him a couple of times, okay. <laughs> but I, don't, I can't remember if he came to the committee meeting. Did did anything come from that in terms of help they need? So the meeting I attended, they talk about uh, their ideas, right? They um, proposed three different um, plans. And I think they are just explaining this, this to the public, right? One is, oh, have um, housing, use this land to have more houses so it will help affordable housing. Second plan is um, just have recreation center use all the land for that and the third plan is uh, do mix right some housing and recreation and they are explaining uh, these three different plans to the public and I think whatever public votes 
it will be the next step as far as I understood. Then uh, they will decide what to do with the land. I don't think that the vote that the voting was they they passed out these little dots to to mm. um, to fill in you know how do you want to use these these various locations on the, on each map. I don't think that these are binding on anybody. They are advisory only. So I mean, how the people vote, I think, will be used as a as one marker for their progress but i don't i don't think it's there's anything binding about it, any of those votes um, and i guess i think the person we, we we've been talking about is josh jerome right he's the city's rep, representative on this committee or he's the um he, he he's the city's person doing that right so yeah. josh is the the lead sort of um planner um, for this project. Um, he's the city's economic development specialist. Um, and then we also have Evelyn Prim, who's been taking a, you know, sort of a, a, a really large part in the communications of this project. Um, and so I, th I think she came to a committee meeting a couple back just to kind of introduce herself. Um, and I do know that, so there are two more um, sessions within this winter um, feedback loop um, where the, really what they're trying to gain from this input is, um, you know, what what they think, you know, might be good uses, as, as we've mentioned, but then also sort of direction um, on what will be proposed and sort of the final report and in those next steps. And so, um, and, and we did, Michael, the dots, um, the exercise there was just to, you know, to kind of see, you know, where people would end up. Um, I will note, um, which I thought was pretty interesting, is they did have a component to that exercise, um, highlighting Abenaki, Abenaki lands, excuse me, sorry about that, lands for um, just use because there were some artifacts that were found on the site. Mm -hmm. um, and so there, there is some thinking about, you know, making sure that, um, you know, we are including um, people of the land. Um, and so that that is happening. Um, so we'll see, you know, at least, you know, what what um, output comes from that with the input. Um, so um, if you can, um, the other two sessions are on the second from six to eight and then um, on the ninth from noon to two, um, just if you wanted to participate. Thanks, Kelly. Shana, I'm wondering, so equity, who can participate, who can't participate in these kinds of sessions? Did anything come up in talking with Josh around concerns around? That like, is like almost exclusively what I remember talking about. And it was okay. maybe more in like the phase one was of like, who should we be reaching out to? How should we be reaching out to them? I shared about our stipend process and tried to figure out if we could use the stipends for participation in these processes. It seems like that didn't come from anything because I haven't seen anything advertised from it. Um, but that 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 was real. Like I'm like, I don't feel like I have opinions on what this property should be used for, but I want people who have opinions to be able to like offer them in that like create a different opportunities for having them in that space. And I think coming out of that was like having lit, like be on property and like doing the walkthrough as well as having Zoom meetings at different times um, and things like that. So, but yeah, that was, I, I haven't participated in this kind of, I think, I think it was like phase one and then like research. And then this is phase three, if I'm remembering correctly, this is off the top of my head. And so I think I was more involved in like the phase one of doing the outreach and um, I have not, talk to anyone in phase three yet but maybe we can also circle back and see if there's more updates there um after these meetings over the next couple of weeks and then get kind of the report back or is it more important that we just try to support turning people out to these um again recognizing that this is like the next round i'm thinking out loud here processing out processing externally sorry um both <laughs> so well i didn't hear any hesitancy in, in the meeting that i was at the uh, people getting up and talking and and uh yeah. expressing their concerns um which were, i think more of getting people to these meetings right. or giving people other opportunities who who may not feel as comfortable is more what i'm concerned about michael oh, 
Okay. Right? I mean, or was was there new people like you haven't seen at other meetings at them too? I don't know. I, you know, I think one of the highlights um, that we did notice as staff at this, this first session and this winter session is that um, there weren't a lot of um, folks with families there. Um, and, and, and because, you know, the, the timing of it was from 10 to 12 while basketball was running. Um, so, you know, and there was also a cross country meet outside and, you know, so for any number of reasons, you know, we just didn't get the draw, um, for that population. Um, I do following this meeting, have an internal meeting with the, the team. So I can certainly mention it just to make sure that, you know, you're sort of still on the radar and, um, you know, so I think that trying to get, you know, a variety of folks from across the city, there is still something that you know, we can work on that being said, you know, there are two meetings in different mediums. There's one that was all in person. There's one that's a hybrid. And then there's one that's fully remote. Um, so. I'll just mention this because it's something I think about all the time is um, one of the, one of the things that gets missed is often is when you're looking for family, you know, families to participate, especially if it's in person and sometimes even on Zoom is if they don't have childcare, they're not going to do it. And so, um, you know, it, and it's easy to overlook and say, well, if they really want to do it, they'll figure it out. But it, that's a, to me, a huge equity issue. I mean, we even see it in the justice center where parents you know, are, are participating with one of their children and then they've got three or four that are in the background and they're, you know, it's an issue. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just thinking too about various ways in which you might solicit input from different groups within the community. I mean, the these sessions are one thing, you know, there's also other kinds of ways you can get that up those opinions that are more diverse than whoever just shows up at a community meeting. Um, and it's not to undo the process that's already been laid out, because um, I think we're probably a little bit late to have a lot of influence in that. But I'm just curious, um, when decisions are made, and I, maybe, it, I don't know who makes decisions. I'm, I'm, I apologize that I don't understand the process, because I, I should understand it better. But when decisions are made, do the decision makers have a comprehensive understand from a range of perspectives in the community what matters to us with that development? Um, so that that would be the guiding principle is, is there anything there that we can help shape so that, because I mean, if we're talking about housing, like I wanna hear from unhoused people about that. I don't wanna hear from folks like me who are, privileged, white, well-off, stable housing people, um, as an example. So that's that's what I'm wondering about. What what that triggers for me, Jeremy, is um, going where, you know, meeting them where they are. So where who where who are the groups that are already meeting? Where where are those people that we want to reach, right? It's it that's the perennial issue with us as well. Like how do we attract people with lived experience and from marginalized communities who have a totally different perspective of the criminal and justice system, right? Like that I hear you. And it takes a lot more effort to make, you know, first of all, to identify, then to like make the connections. And then to, for those of us with privilege to say, oh, I'll go to that place, right? Like that's, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, and I think like I had, you know, shared all of the stuff from our like equity assessment and like was like based on this, here are some things that I think could be cool ideas of like having it available, you know, the materials and the surveys available in different languages, advertising to have one of the meetings have be simultaneously interpreted, um, you know, into like the most common languages spoken at Montpelier Elementary School, you know, had kind of some of these like specific outreach ideas that I don't not that I'm like, I had a, here was like my list and I expect them all to be implemented, but like, I'm not, and like in the, and the stipends and other things, I'm like, I'm, 
I feel like those were all ideas that I had shared kind of as the CJAC chair, and then I'm not seeing those implemented. And so I think like we can circle back to, you know, like saying like, we have two more, I mean, once tomorrow, so I don't know what that means, but right. If, if, if what was the participation in those, and if it's not reaching these key audiences that we identified in our equity um, assessment, then do we want to do some additional, do we want to encourage them to do additional concerted outreach? I, I think, yes, that wasn't a question. I think we want to <laughs> ask them to do that additional concerted outreach. Yeah, I think maybe it does make sense to circle back with, I don't know who the right person is or people are, but um, just to be the constant voice of equity in this process, um, because it's probably going to take multiple like reinforcements. And another issue, it was discussed, uh, the meeting I attended, if a recreation center moves uh, this new land and there's a discussion, what will happen their buildings at downtown? So there are different ideas about it. Maybe it is good for our committee to follow uh, that uh, discussion um, to offer like more... Um, ideas from equity um, perspective to use those uh, buildings because now they are talking about like office places. So probably we can offer other ideas, right? Uh, for people who need, um, you know, to have uh, some uh, place. I, I don't know what, but I think it is good for us to follow that discussion to not only new land, but also old buildings of recreation at the downtown and their future uh, usage. Well, I'll offer one small observation here. I guess it's a significant one, though. Um, all the discussion that went on uh, last Saturday was talking about um, the number of housing units um, in in various parts of the of this this property, and clustering clustering them by size, pretty much. Um, there was no discussion that I heard. And, and and you were there also, Kelly. So you about people who don't who have who can't afford to buy any homes, um, and and oh and Carol, that's your that's a, an important point that uh, that that issue just did not come up. The assumption is that these are all going to be affordable housing, one way not not all, but they'll they'll be affordable housing sprinkled around the, the map or actually clustered around the map. That was one of my objections that there were the, the plan three um, creates three separate social economic com communities. You know, the people living in the high rise, people living in the, the, the five plex and then the three plexes and then a few single family lots. So um, I was concerned about that and at least mixing it up rather than segregating those, those kinds of units. But I didn't hear anything about um, rental um, in, in, in those discussions. And I'm not even sure that they were thinking about uh, how these are gonna be financed. Are they gonna be all rental or are they gonna be all um, kind of minimized? That was an absence. There was an absence of discussion about that. Yeah, that, that's thanks for sharing that, Michael, because it makes me think of another possible role for CJAC. So there, we've been talking about how can we influence outreach engagement, who participates in the process, but I'm also wondering about our role as um, kind of reviewers with the equity lens, like at some point further down the process when plans become more finalized, is there an opportunity for us as 
a committee with our equity and justice hat on to actually review those plans and, and point out just the thing that you're talking about, Michael, of, well, that doesn't really ring, that doesn't, like this aspect of the plan, you know, there's some equity concerns here because of X, Y, and Z. And not that we're experts in land development um, and, and housing development, but we do have, I think we can ask good questions, um, which could be useful to those development plans as they move further down the line. It, it seems to me too that there's somewhere that they are doing analysis about what type of housing the city actually needs, right? Like who do they do they need housing for middle income folks? Mm -hmm. We know they need we need housing for homeless population. So like and it seems to me that that would be information that developers would have and and create their plans based on what the actual data says about what the city needs. It's it, you know it really I don't think it's going to be coming from anecdotal information uh, yeah. from you know people with with privilege <laughs> that live in, live and work in Montpelier making the decision. I think it's going to be it's you know in part a business decision, yeah. and who who are the developers you're attracting who are able to put together the plan that is going to best suit right. what the city actually needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. And I uh, I've attended Bonaudo Housing um, Discussion Forum, and they mentioned uh, in that I think it was like three weeks one month ago. Uh, Montpelier, there's a interesting uh, thing because most of the people um you know living on the streets they they do this by choice so they don't want to rent a house they don't want to uh you know live in a house but they need some place uh to be safe and warm so it, i thought it's very interesting because they were talking about other cities but it's the montpelier case so people uh, you know, they, they choose to be live like that, but they need support, right? So it was very interesting to me to learn this uh, fact. And so I'm sorry, what are our next steps here? Is it to bring Josh to, or like we'll, we'll review the proposals after at our next meeting and then um, bring back responses and feedback? Is that where we're at? I don't know if that's where we're at right now. I think I think we should focus on the in, the outreach engagement angle. I guess my, my last comment was just like further down the line. Down the line. Once the opportunity for public input maybe is less, we might want to review plans somewhat superficially, probably, but just looking out for any equity issues that we're fine that we're seeing. But I think it's still the focus is on encouraging them to be more inventive around outreach. Yeah. So do we want to invite Josh to come in our next meeting and we can ask some of these questions about who has come to yeah. these meetings and how how's that look yeah. like and yeah um and hear about how they think they did for outreach yeah um okay, i do want to be mindful of time here for looking through the rest of the things thank you so much for getting us started Jeremy. but yeah is there anything else yeah i think we've got yeah for next steps for elks lodge and then I think the city council meetings are happening after the election. No, pre-election. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I, did, I didn't quite understand that pre-election timing. Can you remind me what why that is? No, no. I, I read it in my head as post-election when I was reviewing it right now. Um, it seems like we want to wait for the new crop to come in, right? Yeah. Unless we want to get involved in elections, but I don't, I don't think that's our role. Yeah. And we can as a city committee. Uh, okay, to move it to post elections. Like, yeah, just like meeting with people right after they get elected. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. um, 
Okay, and then for the next one for stipends, I actually just got a message late last night from someone, from Tom from the bridge about wanting to do an article about how the stipends are working and stuff and that he was talking to Kelly um, as well, but of just continuing to get the word out about the stipends and how they're, how they're working and then um, re-up them for next budget. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Anything else on that? And then growing our committee, something I've really not been thinking much about. And here we are, Q1. Um, we probably should. Like, this is why we, we haven't been recruiting for our committee and anything else. And now that we have more of a sense of what our mission and our vision is as a committee and that we're sticking to our kind of initial plan, we're not expanding it out. Um, how do we want to grow our committee membership? Um. The first thing that comes to mind, and I, I'll take this on as a task, is I think a quick, you know, short kind of boilerplate blurb that we can use as notes in conversations or emails to individuals or groups. I think it's CJEC is mission is this. We have some successes that we can point to as a committee that I think could get people excited, and we have some things that we're still focusing on. Um, so that's how I'm thinking about just a brief description of the committee and a call for for new members. Um, and, I, and then I think it's, I mean, we've done these things before, but it's still working our contacts in the community like, hey, you would be a good fit for this, or do you know anyone who can be a good fit? I'm also thinking of different groups that I'm aware of um, that it might be useful to send these kinds of um, you know calls out to. So, I mean, that's other than that, I don't have any other kind of outreach ideas. I don't think. Sounds good, Michael or Pellin. Do you have any thoughts here too, or anyone else? <laughs> Sorry, not to. I apply to this committee because I saw the uh, announcement on Front Porch Forum. Yeah. So it will be another way of like mm -hmm. just try, right? Spreading the word, <laughs> post um, on there so people might um, be aware that we are looking for new members. Yeah. I applied because I went to apply for the public restroom committee. <laughs> and this was um, posted next to that. I was like, oh, well, I'll, I'll just click both boxes and here we are and the public restroom community still isn't met so funny how that works <laughs> you made a good choice Gina. yeah i think so it was funny i'm ready for the public restroom committee to finally meet Just kidding. that's good good memories and still people need to use the restroom <laughs> yeah after all these years um did we did we skip over this one about Updating the committee application process. Or did I miss did I miss you mentioning that one? No, I skipped right past it. Um I forget, I forget we had a specific thought about that, but I, I cannot remember it. And this was Lauren and of incorporating the stipend application in with the committee application and getting demographic information like now it, after it's done you can click mm. a button and then fill out demographic information mm. but very few people who are filling out applications do mm -hmm. um and so of incorporating some of those things May, kelly are you if you're the, i think this is like something we just like have to be the watchdog for this and, and like making sure like keeping this on our plan to make sure this happens but this is not I think something that we have to lead on if um, mm -hmm. that makes sense to Kelly. I, maybe let's check in with Lauren about this because I do think this was Lauren. Right? right. right? I mean, I, uh, Michael, you're looking skeptical. I don't, or maybe that's... I can't remember what it yeah. was. Yeah. I think if we, if we want to review the application, <clears throat> look at it and see what, what it is that we think is missing or is unnecessary just so that we can make some specific kinds of re recommendations if that's what it is. Um, and and um, 
I don't remember a, any any specific comments about that at all, and I don't think I recorded any in the minutes. Um, I remember we talked about um, there is a, like questions about education. Hmm. People might uh, find it um, like an obstacle to apply. Uh, so we talk about people who have experience might mm -hmm. be beneficial to our committee. We don't. Uh, we talk about, oh, should we, you know, get rid of that education section or like, oh, your job and relation instead of, oh, I have a lived experience, right? Yeah. So I remember those uh, things from our discussion. So making um, application itself more accessible yeah. for people who have ideas um, to apply instead of, oh, I don't have enough education. I don't have enough work experience. I think if you're just asking an open-ended question that is what what do you believe you would bring to the group, you know, based on like what the charge is for the committee, then you know, you that removes the stigma and allows people to answer in the way that they want to or can. And then you don't have to, you know, have an evaluation based on yeah. those other items. That's great. Thanks for reminding us, Helen. Um, I wonder if a task for us is in an upcoming meeting to review the application together and make some offer some comments about how we can make it more accessible, equitable. And uh, Kelly, can we do this only for our committee, but or it should be for all the committees? Yeah, the so what what's the uh, procedure about it? Shane, I'm muted. You know, uploading the application overall. Like, I don't think it's a separate application for any committee. Yeah. So then city should change or yeah. revise all applications. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. I want to just bring up too that one of one of our newer volunteers um, emailed, actually emailed Kelly to ask if, um, if the stipend was available to CJC volunteers, and it's not um, because the policy is that it's only for city appointed volunteers. Um, so that's a thing. <laughs> um, and, you know, if it, I mean, to be honest, like we've got 50 volunteers, if it were that we needed to have all of our volunteers appointed by city council, it would really slow down, you know, the onboarding and getting people um, ready to be able to actually participate in our on our panels um, or our COSA teams. But I just wanted to raise that because, you know, he was asking the question and he indicated that he would not ask for the stipend, but he was just curious about um, whether it was available to our volunteers. And so that's really the skipping down there to the budget disbursement and this is something else that lauren raised up is that we have more budget in be between cjack's budget and the stipends we have more than we're gonna be able to spend this year and there's this request from all these other committees for doing trainings and we're like we're not doing trainings but we want to support other people for doing trainings and then also can we use this stipend money for not just city committee participation, but for these other opportunities like participating in the Elks Lodge project or just like what you're talking about. Um, and I don't know what that, like, I, I don't know, do we wanna put together like a proposal for what that would look like and then bring that to city budget people or what the process for that would be? Well, that feels like a one-time action based on a surplus this fiscal year. The thing that, Carol, your comment yeah. um, hits for me is, we created the stipend program as a pilot. It started in July, we're coming up on July, well, eventually, and I think we need to build some process of evaluating the pilot um, and making some decisions around how it evolves moving forward. Because Carol, to your point, you know, we had to start somewhere and we had to put some boundaries around the program as a pilot. Um, but we're going to have the opportunity, you know, a year out to evaluate its effectiveness 
Um, and we can take into consideration questions about, well, is it about only appointed committee people or are there other volunteer situations where it really makes sense to offer that stipend? Um, so I think there's there's two issues there. There's the, we've got reserve, we've got surplus. Can we use that money however we want? And in July, we, we need to build a little bit of a process around just evaluating the pilot. pilot. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, <laughs> I think especially for this committee and committees like the Homelessness Task Force, like if you want people with lived experience, right? We want those people to show up. And it's the same thing with our panels. Um, you know, our panels and our COSA teams, it's just, if, if you can offer that, then there's an ability to make it realistic for a lot of people that we aren't gonna get who are just gonna respond to a front porch forum post. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and just to clarify, I do think this was thinking about this year, but then also of like changing how CJAC is budgeted and so that we can get a lump sum and then we can say this is for stipends and for training, offering trainings to other committees, you know, we can like have it be more flexible funds essentially um, that we can just spend on like equity stuff. <laughs> um, and more for it for the public for committees, you know, and recognizing that city staff has their own line item budget for that professional development equity work. Yeah. Um, and then for creating the list of trainers, Pellin, you started that. What's the next step for that? Do you want us to review that? Is it bringing in other experts? Yeah, maybe. Uh... As a committee, we can check uh, those things. And I received a couple more. I can share yeah. them with you. Uh, and I I receive names, not the company. So I can also share with them. I think we should uh, decide, I don't know, big budget issues or something, you know, because each one, I think, charges differently. So I don't know. What do you want? Do you want to pick only one? company no, think, or person then go from there no i definitely think we want to offer many different options for folks right because i think that's the problem that people have been saying i found i found this group and i reached out to them and they can't do it because they're booked up through next year and yeah i've also got to run but okay um let's continue okay so i think we've got on our next meeting agenda we are going to invite josh to come we're going to review the committee application and we're going to finalize our review of ongoing education next steps for our strategic plan. Does that sound good? Yeah. Can we also just clarify, because I can work with Mary Smith on getting the calendar invitation if it's, yeah. if we meet every other week or if it's twice a month. I mean, it's been every other week. So I think okay. let's just continue doing that. So that next one would be February 15th. Okay, so I will, um, so I'll just connect with Mary just to make sure that that goes out to everybody on the list and that it's, you know, for like the next six months that it's on the calendar. Great. Yeah, thank you. I need to go too, so. Yeah, and I um, said that all out loud. Okay, and Josh speak and committee application. Okay. I hope you, you're feeling better soon, Shane. I'm That's feeling so much better. I'm not, I don't like have a fever or anything anymore, but this cough just will not quit. And I got like real drugs for it and it's not yeah. doing anything. So thank was you. It was it COVID? No, it's just a cold. Oh, I tested wow. negative for everything. Wow. It knocked me out for a full week. Yeah. yeah. Well, take care of yourself. Thanks. Drink a lot of tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks all. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you.